Hello, so in this video, I'm going to talk about divorce and alcohol use. And before you click away, this video is good for you, even if you're a non drinker. But if you're a moderate drinker or you're a regular drinker, you should definitely watch this. So stay tuned. Welcome to Wellness with John. I'm John Peters, and these are resources to help you thrive. So this video is a part of a long series that I'm doing on co-parenting after divorce. So if this is the first video that you're seeing and you want to go back and start at the beginning, I'll put a link up here at the top. You can go back and start at the beginning, or you can look in the description, and I'll put a link to the first video in the description as well if you want to watch this video and then go back and start from the beginning. But I am a licensed clinical social worker. I've been in practice for 27 years. And over my career, I've worked with thousands of separated and separating parents. And so I decided to make this series to share some helpful information for you if you happen to be going through a separation and you're a parent or you're separated and you'd like to get some advice about how to cope well with co-parenting after separation. So in this video, I want to talk about alcohol use and divorce. And one reason that I talk about this is that, of course, alcohol use is very pervasive. Lots of people drink alcohol in different amounts and uh, with different frequencies. But this is a particularly big issue for people going through any significant, long-lasting, stressful life event because alcohol is, just to put it simply, it's not a really good way to self-medicate for stress for a stressor that's going to go on for a long time, right? Now, if you have one bad day and otherwise you're not very stressed, and you have a couple of beers to relax, and you don't drink to excess to the point where you do something that you don't like, or you get a hangover or something, <clears throat> that's no big deal. But going through a divorce and co-parenting after separation is very different than just having a bad day. And this is one of the main points I want you to get from this video. So uh, usually the stress is going to be high on you today. It probably was yesterday. It's going to be relatively high tomorrow next week. The bad news is uh, it may be months or longer before you feel like your stress is down to whatever the baseline was before you decided that you were stressed. And so alcohol is not a good way to cope with stress. And, and here's why, okay? So alcohol does suppress our nervous system. And this is one of the reasons that people reach for it when their nervous system is excited through stress, right? But the problem is, there are a couple of problems. One problem is alcohol doesn't fix anything, right? Um, I have yet to meet someone who said, yeah, uh, my divorce went okay but it would have been better if my ex would have just drunk more alcohol during the divorce. Nobody's ever said that to me. No child whose parents separated or adult child who is talking about their parents' separation has ever said to me, yeah, my parents' divorce, it went relatively okay, but it would have been better if my mom or my dad would have just drunk more and been drunk a lot more of the time during the divorce. Nobody has ever said that to me. I don't think anybody has if probably ever said that on the planet, right? So alcohol doesn't fix the problems. It can add problems. And another issue, and this is point number two of why it's not a good medication, is if you've ever known somebody who's a regular drinker and they drink a lot, and compared to a light drinker or a non-drinker, they can drink a whole bunch of alcohol and, and the light drinker would be passed out or throwing up right on the same amount of alcohol. Why is that? Well, it's because if you're a regular drinker of alcohol and alcohol is pushing down on your nervous system, what your body does is start to overproduce stress hormones. Okay. 
And it does that to keep you awake. And that's why a heavy long-term drinker can drink a whole bunch of alcohol and still be awake. And a novice drinker drinking the same amount might even be dead, right? They'd be at least passed out or throwing up. And so, so what happens is when you regularly take an alcohol, your body says, hey, wait, we've got this thing that's coming on board and it's going to sedate us, but we don't want to be sedated completely. We want to be alert enough to fight off bears and tigers. So we're going to overproduce stress hormones in order to stay awake. Okay. And this is what we call tolerance, right? The person can tolerate a higher dose of alcohol because their body is actually overproducing stimulating chemicals to counteract the effects of the alcohol, right? So this is a problem because if someone starts drinking moderately but regularly to cope with a long-lasting stressor like going through a divorce, then that means they're going to keep drinking and they're going to keep drinking because the thing is going to keep going on and their body is going to say, wait, we've got too much alcohol on board, let's start overproducing these excitatory chemicals. And because the thing is going on for a long time and because they want to use alcohol to cope with their stress, what do they do? They drink more, right? I used to work in critical care in a hospital. And I had multiple patients that I watched die because they started drinking after going through a divorce and they kept drinking and they kept drinking more because they needed more alcohol to get the same effect. And eventually they drank enough to die from it, right? Turns out your body can't actually process a half a gallon of vodka a day for too many days before you die, right? That's the way it works, okay? But did those people start off drinking a half a gallon of vodka? No, because that would have killed them on the first day. They started having a couple shots, and a couple shots turned into three or four shots. And eventually they're having three doubles, right? And then four doubles, and then eventually a half a gallon of vodka or something like that, right? So point number one, alcohol doesn't fix the stressor, and it could add more problems. Point number two, your stress is going to go on too long that even if alcohol were a good choice, you're going to have to use it too long and it's not going to fix the problem and you're going to become tolerant of it and you're going to become a heavier drinker. That's, that's the way it tends to work. So if you're a non-drinker, my advice is don't start drinking during your divorce. Not a good idea. If you're a moderate drinker, make a commitment to stay a moderate drinker and do not increase the amount that you're drinking. If you're already a heavy drinker, you need to take care of that and reverse that. And if you're a heavy drinker and you have tolerance and dependence, you really need to talk with your medical doctor if you have a plan to, to quickly and significantly reduce the amount of alcohol you're taking in daily because sometimes doctors want to manage that medically to make sure that you're healthy and safe. Um, the, the, I'm not a doctor, but I'll tell you, quick cessation of heavy drinking carries a withdrawal syndrome for a lot of people. And for some people who go through withdrawal from alcohol, it can actually cause critical health issues and even death, okay? So if you're already a heavy drinker, you need to, <coughs> excuse me, you need to take care of that. And I suggest that you consult your doctor and in order to do that safely, right? So, so alcohol is not a good choice. Am I a prohibitionist? Certainly not, right? A moderate amount of alcohol is fine. In general, we recommend that people drink two or less drinks per day and 14 or less per week to stay in the moderate zone. But just be aware, even if you're drinking a very light amount, your stress is going to stay there, right? You need to do other things to take care of your stress. And if alcohol is your main strategy, this is going to work against you, right? So the takeaway here, keep it low. Better yet, don't start if you're not a drinker. And if you're already a heavy drinker, you need to cut down. You just do. It may have been part of what contributed to your divorce. And even if you can't get your ex back, if you quit drinking, 
uh, if you're a parent and watching this, your kids need you to be sober while you're parenting them. Your kids need you to be sober while you're parenting them, right? No kid wants their dad or their mom to be more drunk. It just doesn't work that way, right? So for you to be an effective, competent parent, you need to be a moderate or a non-drinker, and uh, especially because this is going to stay stressful for a long time, right? Now, in the next video, I am going to talk about multiple suggestions that I have for healthy coping with stress. So stay tuned and watch this video right here.